Okay, we are on pages 29 and 30 uh, of credit number 3. Question number 7. We're going to be uh, asked to answer these questions. What is the x-intercept of the line graph? And so if we look at this line, where what the x-intercept, if you haven't noticed already, is where a line crosses the x-axis. This line right here is the x-axis labeled by the x. Let me zoom in here real quick. And so we want to know where it crosses that. Well, it crosses it right here at 6, 0. So the answer to this question is 6, 0. Question 8 is very similar, except now they want the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is the one labeled y. It's the vertical uh, up and down uh, axis of this graph. And we want to know where it crosses. Well, it crosses right here at 0, 4, and 4 being the y value there. So the answer to question number 8 is going to be 0, 4. All right, let's look at question number 9. What is the slope of the line? So we want to know how much does it rise, how much does it run. So we can do this algebraically. We can do it graphically. I'm going to do it both ways for you. Let's do it graphically first just because I think that's the easiest. We have two points that cross at a really nice lattice points here. And the nice thing about this graph as opposed to the previous pages graphs is that each unit is going by one. So we don't have to deal with little half units. We're going to be going one, two, three, four units down, right? Left to right, we're going down in this case. So our rise is negative four. And our run is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, a run of six. So therefore, our slope is going to be negative four over six, which can be further simplified to negative two over three. Okay. Now we're going to do this algebraically and, and hopefully we'll get the same answer. So let's try that. And we're going to use the intercepts to find the slope. And again, let's refer back to the, um, to the slope formula here. We're going to take y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And uh, the points that we had were 6 comma 0 and 0 comma 4. So let's label these. This is I'm going to call this point 1 and point 2. And so therefore, this is going to be x1, y1. Oh, and then uh, I don't know what I was doing there, x2 and y2. So let's go ahead and, and plug these in. y2 is going to be 4 minus y1, which is, oops, which is, which is, oh, sorry, which is 0. And then x2 is going to be 0 minus x1, which is 6. So if we go ahead and do that, 4 minus 0 is 4, 0 minus 6 is negative 6. And if we simplify that, sure enough, we do get the same answer, um, negative 2 thirds, right? So whether you do it algebraically or graphically, you should end up with the same answer. Okay, question number 10 and 11, same thing. What's the x-intercept of the line graphed? Well, let's take a look. And if we, um, man, what really doesn't help us is that it doesn't go through the lattice point and um, I have the answer key right open right next to me but if you got this wrong I wouldn't blame you but basically they want you to know that it's supposed to go through that point and it doesn't really go through that point very well does it so anyhow the uh, x-intercept is supposed to be 6 comma 0 and uh, the y-intercepts a little bit better right it does go through here, so we're so we're okay with that negative zero comma negative three. So let's fill those in. This is supposed to be six comma zero. This is supposed to be zero comma negative three. And then let's do this graphically first. So if we draw this triangle here, left to right, this line is trending upwards. So we're gonna go up one, two, three units. So this is a positive rise of three, and a run is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, so the run is 6, so the slope is going to be 3 over 6, which when we simplify is going to be 1 half. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, let's verify whether or not this is true with um, finding the slope algebraically. So again, just out of habit, here's the slope intercept form, or sorry, slope formula, y2 minus y1 equals x2 minus x1. And my two points I'm working with are 6 comma 0 and 0 comma negative 3. So this is point 1, point 2. Okay, so let's see. x1, y1, x2, y2. So let's take x, so y2 first, which is negative 3, minus y1, which is 0, over x2, which is 0, minus x1, which is 6. And if we do that, negative 3 minus 0 is negative 3. 
zero minus six is negative six and since we have two negatives they're gonna become positive there and if we simplify three over six we get one half which is uh, basically what we got up here it is the same answer so we have verified that those are uh, true as well so that was page 29 uh, let's move on to page 30 where now we're going to be interpreting slope what does this mean in light of a context so um, I'll let you read explain three on your own but jumping into explain one the table below shows the distance that a group of hikers has traveled from the start of the trail so um, if we take a look at this I know it doesn't say it but um, one we can call uh, we can call the x values the other one we can call the y values so let's just call this the x values and y values just to be able to keep it straight but in the context the x values are the time that's being tracked and the y values are the distances and miles that are being tracked so um, let's see what would be the rate of ch well, what we're trying to find in this question is what would be the rate of change of this function in miles per hour so we're essentially trying to find the slope we want to compare miles to the hour and if that wasn't clear I'll make it a little bit clearer we're comparing the miles to the hour miles per hour uh, which also happens to be the change in the change in y compared to the change in x and that little triangle actually is the mathematical symbol for it for change so let's take a look how much is it changing um, each time for the y values and, and for the x values x values is changing by what well, looks like positive it's adding two each time right so it's a positive two change here um actually let me see um they are not linear the way that they're written so i'm gonna take a step back here so if you noticed the next one would have been plus three and and the reason for that is because um the points that they gave have, are 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 not linear to each other but um, if we write the ratios they should be lim uh, linear so let's go ahead and try that um, any two points and we're gonna try two points just to, to verify this but uh, let's go with this point and this point so we're gonna work with um, I should actually let me see we're gonna work with uh, 1 comma 2 and 3 comma 7 okay we'll call this point 1 we'll call this point 2 x1 y1 x2 y2 and so the the formula again was uh, y2 minus y1 so we're going to subtract this from this 7 minus 2 over 3 minus 1 3 minus 1 so the slope is what is that no, 7 minus 2 is 5 3 minus 1 is 2 so our slope is essentially two and a half or yeah two and a half or, or let's leave let's let's keep it at five over two um, let's just verify with another set of points. Let's try these two points here. So let's compare 7 comma 17 to 10 comma 24.5. Oh, I don't really like that decimal, but um, let's just go with it. Let's call this point 1. Let's call this point 2. X1, Y1, X2, Y2. So again, the slope formula says it's Y2 minus Y1, so 24.5 minus 17 over 10 over 7 so 10 minus 10 minus 7 okay 24 and a half minus 17 is going to give us a seven and a half over uh, 10 minus 7 which is 3 uh, which will end up giving us uh, that's the simplest form I guess but it'll end up also giving us two and a half 2.5 which is what we have here right okay so uh, I know I circled this one but let's go with a two and a half and sure enough two and a half is one of our answers so we're going to label this we're going to call this b so that that is a rate rate of change of this function in miles per hour two and a half miles per hour